Hey, what's up? My name's Steve. Okay. Just gonna interrupt me there. You go ahead with your red hat and your red shirt. Go ahead. I'm here at Bittner Park today because I'm gonna capture some pickleball content. If you haven't been living under a rock, you know the pickleball is a thing. Wait, wait, what are you even talking about? People don't live under rocks. Okay, hold on. Let's pause on the pickleball for a second. Although I do like the red hat and the red shirt. I wanna give a shout out to Capture One and say thank you for sponsoring this video because I'm excited to talk to you about some of the new features that are coming out in version 23. I've been using Capture One for years, so I'm really excited that I get to play around with some of these new features, test them out, and share them with you. Also, big thanks to them for providing a 20% off new annual subscriptions to the first 100 people that take advantage of that. So if you wanna get that information, access to this app, access to all Capture One information, social media, and access to that coupon code, hit the description below. Now, let's continue with the pickleball. Uh, I also like to partake a little bit. You don't say. So what I've done is I've recruited a couple of people to help me make some content for Selkirk. We're gonna be doing some high burst rate, 7200 style. I'm also gonna be capturing uh, in real time the video feed that's coming directly from the camera. And one of the coolest things that I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna be tethering directly from the R5 to my iPad using Capture One. So that way I can get images in high resolution, preview them on the iPad, full screen, do some quick edits, then when I'm done here, I can then transfer all of those files onto my laptop and continue culling and editing that session. Okay, and we're back. Shoot is done, no more pickleball. But seriously, pickleball is a lot of fun. And I'm curious, have you played pickleball? Do you know about pickleball? Hit me in the comments below, let me know. I really enjoyed playing it and I really had a lot of fun doing this shoot. Shooting Tethered was an awesome experience and I'm so glad that they added that feature. If you haven't checked out the video that Rob did where he walked you through that process as well, definitely be sure to check out that video. I exported all the images from the iPad onto an SSD directly. I exported them as EIP files, so that, that way it would include all of the metadata, star ratings, color tags, any adjustments, and then imported them into Capture One, and I've loaded them up here in version 23. Normally, I import all of my images and then I cull through them, so that's what I'm gonna do right here, but I should mention that this new feature that I wanna talk about, the cull feature, is available upon import. So keep that in mind. And I'm just right over here in my capture folder. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the cull button. If you don't see the cull button, go ahead and do a right click, customize that toolbar. And then what we're gonna do is just make sure we drag out the cull icon. Let me hit done. And then now when I click on cull, what it's gonna do is it's gonna load up all of my shots. Right now I have the viewer selected. If I hit the G key, it's gonna give me a grid. You'll see up here in the upper left, the enable groups option. So this is something that's kind of cool. But first, if I uncheck that, it's gonna just show me all my shots. I could click on an image, hit the G key, and just start going up and down and cycling through, adding one stars, that's the way that I prefer to call, just a one star, adding one stars to the keepers that I want. But if I hit the G key again, I go back to the grid, and then I enable groups, it's going to try to find the similarity between some of those shots. If I set it at 100, it's gonna give me a lot of groups, but what it's gonna to try to do is, is narrow down the shots that are most similar to one another. So that way you're going through and finding the selects from shots that are closely related. If I bring this all the way down to zero, it's basically as if I don't have enable groups turned on at all because it is in fact at zero. 50%, you get the idea. It's trying to split the difference there. So let's set this, I don't know, maybe to, to 80, something like that. I'm gonna go back to the viewer here and this first group you can see has three shots in it. So I can use the up and down arrow keys and if you're wondering, yes, there is a cheat sheet right down over here. I can use the up and down arrow keys to start going through these shots, find the ones that I like, mark them with a one star. To move on to the next group, I just hit the right arrow key and then now I'm in the next group and I can very quickly go through. Not that I ever thought culling previously was slow, but it is significantly faster now. You get the idea. You mark your images, you cull them. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And then now, if I want to, I'm gonna click on my one stars and see that I've got 51 images selected. So I'm really glad that they added this new cull feature because you no longer need to use a third party app for any of your culling. Stick around because I got two more features that I wanna show you. Layers and styles and smart adjustments. You don't wanna miss that. Okay, so the next new feature that I wanna talk about is adding layers within your style. So saving a layer within a style, and this is really cool. I can, for example, make this dark purple contrast layer style. This is gonna include a whole bunch of stuff. There's a little bit of a color grade in there. There's some HDR, there's some levels, there's 
uh, contrast, things like that that I've added into this color grade. Right now it's currently set to an opacity of 50%. So it gives me the ability to, to push it and boost it a little bit more or dial it back depending upon where I want that to be. So now what I could do is I can come up to my adjustments, I can go to styles, I can choose save custom style. I can now have just this layers saved as its own style. So I almost could just eliminate making any of the other adjustments that I want, just save in this own layer style. Let's hit save. Hit save. And now I can come over to another image, and if I want to load in this style, head over to my styles, go over to my custom styles, boom, dark purple contrast, click on that, come back to my adjustments, here it is, dark purple contrast, saved at 50%. And if I want to boost it a little bit, I just slide it up, I want to bring it back, I just I pull it back. So it gives me the ability now to go through and create, at least in my workflow, a plethora of color grading styles, which I can then apply to different images depending upon how I want them saved. Another adjustment that I tend to do is I will make, I'm gonna go ahead and just walk you through that right now. I'm gonna make a filled adjustment layer. I'm gonna call this even greens. Within this layer that's filled, I'm gonna head over to my color. I'm gonna to go to my skin tone. And I'm not modifying skin tone, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the greens of the grass. Make sure that those are targeted. I don't really wanna include too many yellows maybe a smidgen of yellow, but mostly greens. And then what I'm gonna do, let's pull the smoothness down a little bit. And now I'm gonna drag up the uniformity slider so that all of my greens are even. I, I don't want there to be blotchy greens. It's, it's a thing that I, that I like doing. So now I can go through over here, have this saved, do the same thing, adjustments, styles, save this custom style. Just having the even greens checked as the layer, hit save. And then I'm gonna call this even greens, hit save. And now if I come over to any other shot, I can sure enough head over to my styles and custom styles, select even greens. And then now as a layer, I have all of my greens evened out. So this is really, really cool. And of course I can come over to my styles again and I can stack these. If I click on the dark purple contrast with the even greens, head back over to the adjust and now I can dial those in as I need to, to have my even greens and my dark purple contrast. Pretty cool. Okay, so the third feature that I wanna to talk to you about in version 23 are smart adjustments. I'm over here now in a new catalog and I actually have some variants in an album. Oh, that's a new thing too. Variants in albums. Simple, small little things, right? Just those little improvements are great. But I've got a series of images here and I have this one hero image that I wanna have then matched across the other images. And I'm not talking about just syncing settings. That, that's not this. Let's head over to adjust. I'm just gonna right click over here. I wanna add a tool. Let's look for our smart adjustments. It's gonna show up down here at the bottom. I'm gonna pull that out. And now you can see I have the ability to set an image as a reference. So I'm gonna use this image right here. So I'm gonna click on this. It is now set as the reference. And what it's asking me is, what do I wanna reference? The white balance and the exposure. So I wanna say yes to both of those things. So then I can go ahead and click and select all the other images in this album and I can hit apply. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna use artificial intelligence to go through and now use that, and it did such a great job. It's gonna go through and now it's gonna get all of those images to match. And what it's doing is it's not necessarily grabbing the exact same exposure adjustments because you can see that some of these images here, this is plus 0.15, this was negative 0.08, it's not just syncing the settings to say, oh, you increased by one stop, let me increase by one stop across the board. No, it's gonna look and say, this image is a little bit darker, so I need to increase by two stops, for example. So it's a really smart and intelligent way for you to go through, set a base image and edit, think about weddings, events, the ability for you to sync and have all those images now consistent. One thing to note is that you wanna make sure that when you're syncing these images, when you're using this feature, that there's a face in the reference image. It's gonna struggle a little bit if you don't have any kind of face, for example, landscape work or product work. Having that face in there is really gonna kind of calibrate with the skin tones, and then it will do a much better job and a much better outcome of syncing and matching. One thing to note with the smart adjustments, I can actually save this 
as a style if I wanted to. So the settings that I have here, knowing that if I wanna go through and match, let's say I kind of get my, my skin tones calibrated just the way that I want, I can save this as a style to then match white balance and the exposure for future sets of images moving forward. So really cool function. So those are just some of the new features that are coming out in version 23 of Capture One. Again, big shout out to them for getting me hands on with this and being able to share it with you. The iPad functionality now is incredible. Version 23 is gonna be dope and I'm excited for more and more improvements that they have along the way. If you have any questions about some of the things that I talked about, hit me in the comments below. I'm gonna do my best to address those. But if you're looking for all of the new features and any more information and more support, be sure to head over to Capture One's website. Again, down in the description below. Don't forget about that 20% off coupon code for the first 100 people that are new subscribers. I'm excited for you to play with this software and I hope you go out and play some pickleball. We'll see you in the next one.